Hello, everyone. Welcome to Backstory. I'm Chuck Bushbeck, your host, and I am with legendary PA announcer for the Philadelphia Flyers, Lou Nolan. Lou, welcome to the show. Well, it's great to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. 43 years, Flyers history. You must have seen a lot of action. Well, yeah, ducks and pucks and sticks and occasional player that went past, won't work without glass, and all kind of stuff happened there. You know, Did, you, did you ever get hit, Lou? Yeah, I got nailed once. You, I, I, you know, it's you don't really know because it's just like boom, right? And, and you're hit. And um, I'll tell you one story about that. Uh, I used to have a microphone that I could talk to TV with. We were way ahead of the league on a number of things, and mm -hmm. that was one of them. But uh, the league stopped that when, you know, they would ask me questions about the ref, Gene Hart and Bobby Taylor. Right. And I got nailed once, and my wife Ellen was at home. She didn't come to the game, so I get I get hit and. Uh, I, I, I was awake, but, uh, you know, the guy said, Louie's been hit. And so he went out, asked me a question, and I, I couldn't – nothing worked. My tongue wouldn't work. I was just, like, you stunned. You were in shock? I don't know what I was in. Oh, I was okay. in puck. And, uh, <laughs> and um, when I finally got it all together, I, I said, I'm good, honey, I'm good, uh, meaning to talk to Ellen. Yeah. And, and uh, so I got home from there, and – after the game, and I expected to get a, you know, oh, are you okay? Yeah, Anything? didn't happen? No, she was asleep. <laughs> she didn't even see any of it. Sleep on the sofa, so, you know. So is this something that growing up that you thought about doing? How did this all come about? Well, my hockey background goes back to grade school. Okay. St. Barney's in southwest Philly. You played hockey? No, oh, well, I, let, me, let me go a little I farther. I got you, okay. So uh, I, I met a guy there, a classmate, whose uncle was a gold judge for the Philadelphia Ramblers. They played at 46th to Market. Okay. They were a minor league team. And we used to go up on Friday nights uh, and uh, just run around the rink. I was a, sort of a rink rat that didn't skate much. And we'd skate after the games once in a while and get the sticks that were broken that were sent to the penalty box and glue them back together and put on our Chicago shoe skates. You know, I don't know if you're old enough to know about those, but... They were little skates that they turned the key, they, they w clipped onto your shoes. And, you know, go skate behind the school on right. a uh, street that was just resurfaced. So we'd play there with the sticks and tape them up and chalk and draw some goals and skate back and forth and play like we were, you know, the, the hockey players. I then um, began to go downtown on the, on the trolley and pick up the NHL books, and I watched the NHL Original Six. So when... Um, when it came time to see the billboard, the Flyers right. are coming, the Flyers are coming, I thought, oh, maybe <laughs> something would happen. Met a guy at the beach, Joe Cadillac, who's a great friend of mine, and uh, he was the Flyers' first PR director. He was named okay. after we met each other. And I said, if you need somebody to help, you know, I used to follow hockey, so maybe right. I can help you. And uh, I began running the press box the uh, first few years, and when the announcer left, uh, I said, uh, can I do that? Because I made announcements right. on the phone. And um, I took an audition with uh, Lou Scheinfeld, who was Ed Snyder's number two then. Okay. And um, it was when they were putting the third level on the building, the Spectrum. The spectrum, right. Gotcha. So they had the crane in there and everything. And they, ding, 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 and they put the crane up. And I said, <laughs> guys, can you turn the crane off? I have something important I have to say here. Now, you obviously went through the era uh, of the Flyers' two Stanley Cups and the old adage, hat trick in 76 never happened. But was that your best moments? Um, was when those Stanley Cup years, those Broad Street, Broad Street bullies? Well, I was the same age as most of the players, so I sort of hung <laughs> out with the guys a little differently okay. than these kids today. But, um, yeah, they were some of my best moments, that and, uh, you know, the Russian game in 76. Can you, can you go into that a little bit? Because, like, the, the newer audience, they're somewhat aware of the when the Russians came here. But there was two Soviet teams, I believe. One was the Wings and one was the Red Army team. The Red Army team was the better, Tretiak and those guys, right? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, they just produced, and you may have seen it, uh, a documentary called The Red Army, which talks about their system. And what they would do was take 5,000 kids and make them 2,500 kids and make them uh, 1,500 kids, and then 500, and then 100, and come out with the 50 best players in all of the Soviet Union. Right. And they become part of the Army. Did you feel extra pressure? I mean, the, the Red Army team, they, I think they had just tied the Canadians, and they had beaten the Rangers and the Bruins, and Philadelphia was center stage. 
and I'm thinking millions of people are tuning into this game, and, and you're announcing it. Funny story. Uh, I was in the production meeting with Ralph Mellenby, who was the guy that ran the Hockey Night in Canada, and they picked it up. And I knew him well from working with him on some other games. And he said, Louie, he says, I don't want you to be nervous. 250 <laughs> million people are going to watch this game. I said, well, thanks, Ralph. I, I really needed that one. But I did, uh, you know, part of the uh, introduction in Russian. Gene Hart helped me put that together. And um, was I nervous? A little bit. Yeah. You know, but uh, it, it was amazing. Well, these, these were, I mean, I was, I was a kid growing up, and these were great days. We had the parades and, and things like that. And I remember, you know, the Broad Street Bullies and Dave Schultz and, and I think one of your famous lines over and over again in the game was uh, Flyers penalty number eight, Dave Schultz, uh, two minutes for roughing, five minutes for fighting, <laughs> a 10-minute misconduct. How many times did you possibly say that? <laughs> oh, legions of times, Chuck. Yeah. And um, uh, it, uh, Dave was quite a player. He would uh, – it, 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 when the game started, his eyes became like ping pong balls. I mean, he <laughs> he had the intensity, and you've you've played pro sports, you know yeah. what intensity's like. And Dave had it. And um, uh, when he would get a penalty, you know, we couldn't even talk to him. There there are guys that come in the box now are you know great guys, and they yeah. talk to us. Some will, some won't. Uh, but Dave wouldn't. You know, he was just oh, always on edge. Well, going back to the Russian game and Dave Schultz, um, the Russians came in and. The pressure that even as a fan watching this, knowing that this is our country uh, playing the Soviet Union and it's our fly, fly guys that are, you know, have to prove something here because they've just gone through pretty much the whole NHL. I mean, it was nasty. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, you know, the slash on the back of the leg or the bottom of the skate right. or something of that nature, you know, a, a, a butt end in somebody's belly right. early on in the game. So it was understood that, that it was going to be like that. It was yeah. just a nasty game. Flyers had to win that game. Right. And when Ed Van Imp lowered the boom on Karmeloff in front of the front of the net, right. uh, which we've seen hundreds of times, and referee still sees this as a legal check. Lloyd Gilmore was the ref. Uh, and, you know, he went down, started to get up, and then decided he was going to stay down. Mm -hmm. And um, then there was no penalty on Van Imp. So then, you know, they're, they're, they all go to their bench, and they're standing there, and the referee comes over and talks to the, the uh, fellow was with me, the interpreter, and he says, I don't know what they're going to do. What do you think we should do here? And, you know, I knew the guy real well. I said, nah, it's just an intimidation tactic. He says, yeah, I know. They're trying to get to me. <laughs> he said, give him two minutes for delay of the game. So now not only did they have a non-two-minute call right. on Van Imp, but they had two, two minutes to go there, and that's when, boom, they decided they were gone. Uh, all right, we're going to head to commercial break now uh, with my guest Lou Nolan, and we'll be right back.